Hey, it's Merrill. This video is going to teach you how to draw NBA superstar James Harden of the Houston Rockets. And don't forget, at the bottom of my channel page, I have a playlist of how to draw basketball players, including LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, Kevin Durant, and uh, many more. Be sure to check that out. Let's begin. Step 1. Draw in the shape of James Harden's eyebrows. Step 2. Draw a tall rainbow shape for James Harden's forehead. Notice that one end of the rainbow touches his eyebrow, but the other one does not. Step 3. Add double lines for James Harden's upper eyelids. Step 4. Add in the pupil and iris and close the eye shape. Step 5. Add in the simplified shape for James Harden's nose. Notice that its height is similar to the height of the forehead shape. Step 6. Add the spiky thingy on top of his head. Step 7. I know you're dying to draw in the beard, but draw in the cheeks first. Next, let's shade in the eyes and add the darker regions underneath his eyes. Next, let's close the hair shape. Next, finally, add the beard. Notice from the bottom of the beard to the bottom of the nose is equal in height to the bottom of the nose to the top of the forehead. Next, give him a mouth. And remember, if yours doesn't look like James Harden, just turn it into Santa Claus. Finally, add the ear shape. Hey, it's Merrill, and uh, I'm going to shade this drawing in real time for you. You can skip ahead. You could go to any point that you want. Uh, but if you mess up, I'm going to put a button here that will teach you how to get it back to exactly this point so it looks like this. And this way you can be fearless with the shading. So just hit the button right over here at any point and uh, you'll be able to uh, go back to make yours look like this. Just trust me on that. All right, so first thing we are going to do, we're going to try to find the darkest part. And I'm looking at my reference image and it's definitely going to be uh, a combination of uh, the pupil and irises, uh, the darker parts of the eye, the nostrils, uh, the mouth, the beard, and the hair. So we're going to put those in first. I am using um, a 2H pencil. Let's see if we can see that. There we go, a 2H pencil. Um, and I'm using this because it allows me to slowly build up the tones. So let me begin doing that. Oh, let's go right into the beard. Why not? And I'm putting line next to line. And I'm going to do a basic, some basic hatching first. And his beard is not very straight, his hair is curly, um, his beard is kind of wavy, but we're going to put that in with the next layer. But for the first layer, just so that we can cover a lot of ground, because there's a lot of hair there, we are going to, um, we're going to do some very straight shading. I recently watched the uh, Mark Crilly shading video. Um, and he shows three, uh, it's the three different ways to uh, shade uh, one of his drawings. And, you know, the quickest, fastest way uh, is with this simple hatching. And I'm going to go over it again, but put texture in next time. I'll show you what I mean. All right, so there we go. We're done with this. Now, on top of this, now I'm going to start to put texture. I'm going to try to put some hints of curls. And again, this is all with the 2H pencil. If you don't have one, just use an HB pencil, which is the same as a number 2 pencil. And let me zoom in so that you guys can see. I'm going to put some squiggly lines. You don't want to cover everything so that you have those gaps 
and those gaps will give it uh, the sense that there's a bunch of different uh, highlights and shadows in there. So right on top of the hatched layer, I'm going to go in and just put uh, what seems like curly hair. I'm just putting squiggles in. And I'm going to go to time lapse now. Alright, so from here we're going to do the mouth. And the mouth is just going to be in dark, and you're barely going to see the upper lip. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave a thin line, just for an indication of the teeth, right at the top. I'm going to push hard again with the 2 h pencil and fill that shape in. I'll zoom in so that you can see that thin line that I left right in here. And for the upper lip, I'm going to do, I'm going to press lighter than I did for the uh, beard, but it's still pretty covered. And then what I can do is I can take a uh, Q-tip and do a little bit of smudging. You could use a Q-tip, a paintbrush, um, tortillion, which is a blending stump, any one of those. Um, for the bottom lip, what I'm going to do is I'm going to diversify the shading a little bit more. I'm going to put a line over in here. But there's a highlight on this that I want to keep in. All right, so just like that. And we're going to add some more shading a little bit later, but for now, this is, uh, this is how we want it. Next, we're going to do the nose. And the nose is actually pretty dark. It's in shadow. The bottom of the nose, we don't want it to be as dark as the beard. And this is why I love the, um, the 2H pencil, because it kind of prevents us from you know going too dark right away. But we want this to be in full, no, not full, in um, partial shading. And we want the nostrils to stand out we want that to be as dark as the beard. And we're going to have to go back a little bit later and add some more shading to the beard because it's all about relativity. See how when I darken this, it makes the lip pop a little bit more? So let me stick to the nose though. This is going to be in some dark shading. Now right up the center, what I want you to do is I want you to put a thin line that goes to right about here and you'll see why in a few. For the eyes, what we're going to do, and let me zoom in so you guys can see this region. For the eyes, we're going to go very dark once again. But not quite as dark as the beard. And what we're going to do is we're going to shade in this triangular region right in here. You see the triangle that I'm putting in? I'm going to put another triangle on the other side. And this region, we're going to put in pretty dark. Almost as dark as the eyebrows. And now, in between, there's a box region. Kind of is like the top of the eyebrows 
kind of goes in there and there's a shape within here we're going to shade in there as well right on top all drawings go through an awkward phase so probably in it right now I'm going to darken the eyebrows because again it's relativity I want to make sure that these eyebrows are darker than what we have going on in here and the regions under the eyes we want to be almost as dark Now the pupil and iris, we want these to be very dark. We might leave one indication of a highlight. So if there's a point that you didn't fully fill in, leave that as like the reflection in the eyes, but basically his eyes are super dark. Now what we're going to do with this side of the eyelid, we're going to shade. And believe it or not, we're going to put some shading over the eyes. We're not going to press super hard, but we're going to go right over the whites of the eyes and we're going to put some hatching in. Now going down the bridge of the nose on this side, very important, we have a dark area. So we have a highlight going on on this side and we have this mid-range over in here. It's a little bit different on this side. But what we're looking for is relativity. How dark is this relative to this? How dark is this relative to this? These are equal. Um, this is lighter. We want to start differentiating the tones and you do that by putting different pressures on the pencil. Let's go back to those original triangle shapes that we put in in the shading. Going to go a little bit darker in there. And that goes dark all the way down. All right, now for this cheek, I'm going to put in some light shading all across to start. And also up in here. And we're going to leave a little area of highlight, although it's going to be darker than that. And now we're going to try to build a highlight in here. So I'm going to put a shape in that I'm going to build around. It's okay if you go over where you intended to go. You could just take an eraser and fix it. Now this side I'm actually going to erase the bridge of the nose and I'm going to do some neutral shading. And the highlight on this side of the nose is a little bit less strong. And right underneath the cheek here, there's going to be a highlight, which I'm going to carve in over in here. 
and it's uh, somewhat symmetrical with this side. It's a little bit of a darker region. And I want to make sure that I am darkening this region in here. And over here on the side, this is going to be darker. So I'm going to do some shading in here. And we're going to actually erase these lines. We're going to remember where they are, leave them in light. But the reason you have this funny shape in here is because it gets gradually darker. So this is going to be darker than this. And this is going to be darker than this. The bottom of his hair, it's darker. And I'm going to go up here, shade in the hair. Same thing we did with the beard. I'm going to fill this in. And over here, this is going to be dark. Highlight on the head, which is consistent right about here. That's a little bit darker. Going up and going through. All right, so this is the first layer of shading. Um, let's take a look at it. Let me zoom back. Oh, I didn't do the ear, but that's okay. This is the first layer of shading, and it's starting to look like him. It's not him yet. Now, here's where we really have to look at the reference image and uh, see what changes we could make. And how do we make these changes? We can adjust lines with the blending stump. So, for instance, if we wanted to extend a line um, or extend a shade, you could go into it like this. Like I'm noticing in the reference image, kind of gets dark right along the edge of the hair here. So I'm going to put that in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blending stump and I'm going to smudge. And this does uh, a few things. It gets rid of all of the white in there. So paper is not perfectly flat. Um, this kind of pushes it in and gets rid of the white. Uh, and it also extends the shading that we have. Um, we could also use the eraser to carve out highlights. So for instance, I'm seeing in the picture, right over in here, there's a highlight. There's another strong highlight right over in here. And I might have done a little too much. Over in here, there's a highlight. The other way that we can adjust it is we could go back with the pencil. And we can use other pencils. So the 2H, it's a great pencil for slowly building up tones, but where you really get the likeness is with the tones. You want proper placement and, you know, it leaves a light line so that you can easily adjust. But in terms of, um, in terms of building the tones, there are better pencils than the 2H. So it's a great pencil for design, not a great pencil for, um, for building tones quickly. Slowly, yes, quickly, no.
So right now, uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to grab my 2B pencil and we're going to go back in and we're going to adjust some more. First, let me take care of the ear. So we have some dark shadows in here that get as dark as pretty much everything else, uh, like the eyes and the beard. Putting that in. And I'll quickly put that in and go back. going to go back, I'm going to darken the nostrils. This is actually a, a B pencil that I'm using. And you see how it's getting darker? Let's zoom into the face a little bit more. I'm going to go over this and watch it get darker. Just like that. Just like that. And then I could go in and darken the shading in here. There's no highlight down here. So I'm going to make sure that the nostrils um, are dark. And I'm going to go back pretty much repeat what I did and make sure that everything is relative so there's different layers of darkness I want to make sure that all of them are relatively dark to each other the eyebrows are going to be dark The eyes are going to be dark, but how dark are they relative to the other parts? That's what we're answering right now. And those shadows underneath the eye are very important. as well as the shadows in the eye. So we want to go back over again. darkening the area under the eye once again and you see it's already becoming his eyes so the H pencils are great and the HB pencil is great but shouldn't be used alone The mouth is another dark area. Let me zoom out so you guys can see that. And you see slowly but surely, especially after we get the eyes, um, it is becoming James Harden.
think the Oklahoma City Thunder is missing him right now. Um, but, you know, what one team's loss is, uh, another team's gain. Um, the Rockets look very formidable this year, a lot better than my Knicks. Ugh. All right, so now going back into the beard. Now watch this. Doesn't look too much like him now. Watch this after I put the beard in. Let's go to time lapse. Okay, so um, now we're out of time lapse, and you can see uh, the difference in the likeness right there just by adding that one layer of tones. Uh, it makes a ginormous difference. Uh, so we're going to go back and we're going to look, we're going to revisit this area right over in here. So we're going to do some uh, darkening just by some hatching. And one of the things that I notice is um, at the top of his hairline, um, it's almost like a dark area. Usually, it's the opposite. You want to have soft hairlines when you draw, but for him, a little bit different. Um, for the hair, I am going to, let me zoom in so you guys can see this. For the hair, I'm going to make the squiggles a little bit thinner than I did for the beard so that there's a difference in thickness. He's got cool hair. All right, so let's zoom out. And let's look to finish this off. So we have darker regions over in here. This gets darker over in here. And here we go to the cheek. Now we're going to try to match the tones in the reference image. And I'm going to try to cover this over a little bit without losing that highlight by pressing really lightly. There we go. Now, over in here, it is tricky. So there's an area that's slightly darker that kind of curls right around here. And this side of the face, there's no highlight right over here by the beard. So what I could do now is I'll take my blending stump, I'm going to press out the wider areas. I'm going to smudge in here, which darkens it. And this, I mean all it is, it's rolled paper, like really, really tight 
rolled paper and it just helps spread the tones. And over here I want it to be darker. Over here I want it to be darker. And I'm looking at this and I'm going to go back to my 2B pencil, 2H pencil for a second and I'm going to just darken the white of the eye except for a highlight that I'm leaving in. So this is going to be darker. Dude's got dark eyes. Dark rings, he wants a championship, he's losing sleep. some shading right in there. I think I left his lip too light. I want to have some tone to it. So let's put it in. I'm also going to darken this. And you see how this is coming together now, now that we're adding the tones? We could use the blending stump in here. We can create a soft edge at the end of the beard. If you don't have a blending stump, um, you could use a paintbrush. If you don't have a paintbrush, use a Q-tip. Now let me take that um, 2B pencil and I want this area to be very dark. So I'm going to go right in I'm going to darken that. I'm going to hint at the neck. Let's give the guy a neck. And let's just do some light shading. I'll use the eraser to sharpen the edge. I don't want to outline, but I'm going to leave a nice strong highlight in there. I'm 
just putting finishing touches on. And I created an edge here, but I don't really want it to be an edge, so watch what I'm doing. Bye-bye, no more edge. See how that just disappeared? All because of the uh, blending stump. And I'll also darken this. I want to create a sharp edge. Over here. Darken this. Darken this. Can you tell how much I love doing ears? Boring. They're somewhat important though. Alright, so there's a little triangular shape in here. And this kind of comes up. Unless if you bring it up, people barely notice ears. Interestingly, when I paint, I like doing ears because it's a great spot where you can put highlights in with different colors. But when I draw in monotone, it's a little bit less exciting. So I added, erased. Now I'm going to go back to my blending stump and create that neutral. Alright, last, what we're going to do is we're going to pull out some highlights. Maybe work the forehead a little bit. Highlight. We have the highlights up here and they're a little too bright. Highlight. Highlight. Another one down here. Extend this one in here. And I'm using the edge of a small pencil. Some people use a kneaded eraser, but I, I kind of like this. That's just me. It's a mechanical drawing pencil. All right, let's finish this up. I'm going to add one more layer on top to the forehead. Going to use the blending stump stump to extend this. and minimize this highlight in here.
gonna darken over in here. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we're going to call that done. Um, I hope you learned that, uh, you know, tones can really um, adjust an image. Um, you get the shapes in, then you build those tones and it makes a huge difference for you. So, um, you know, if you watch this, I'm confident that you'll be able to pick up the tones. Um, if you get frustrated, remember, um, there's the link uh, right at the top here you can try right again. Uh, so I know a way to get you back uh, to that starting point. Um, so, you know, be sure that you make sure that you do the, um, the shading without fear. Um, cause, oh, there's always a creative way that, uh, you know, you can fix things. But again, once again, I hope this video, you learned something and I hope you enjoyed the process. Thanks for watching.